The Sports Source is brought to you by Fast Frame. Turn your memorabilia into a work of art. East Tennessee's first and only year-round sports talk show on television. This is the Sports Source with your host, John Pennington. Good Sunday morning to you. So today, we're going to talk about all the coaches that should be fired. Oh, did something happen in the second half that I missed? Uh, one of the weirdest games you'll ever see. Uh, when I was a boy, I remember watching the, the Coach Johnny Major show. In 1979, after they knocked off Notre Dame, he came out and he banged a shillelagh on the desk. John Ward uh, turned red. It's on YouTube. I still remember that from when I was a kid. So rather than do our usual dissection of the game from all angles, we're just having a party today. So if this is your way to cap a victorious weekend. I think you're going to like all of the VFLs we got here. Some folks you haven't seen in a while should be a fun, fun show. Let's dive right into it. What do you say? First segment of our program brought to you by Tenova Healthcare. It's Prostate Cancer Awareness Month. Guys, be smart. Ask your doctor if it's time for a PSA test. If you have any issues, go to Tenova's Men's Health Center of Excellence. We thank all of our sponsors today. This is a very, very unique show. If not for our sponsors, you wouldn't have this show. And if not for you visiting our sponsors, we wouldn't have this show. So thank you very much and thanks to them. Let me welcome in wave one. We have Bob Hodge. We have VFL. You're not Willie Raincloud today. You're smiling <laughs> well over the street right there. We got Jimmy Himes back with us. Mike Strange, always good to have you here. Uh, I want to start with you, as a matter of fact. Uh, and by the way, in honor of yesterday's performance, we're going to suck for the first 30 minutes, but the last 30 are going to be great. Okay? <laughs> uh, Mike, I'm going to start with you. You've covered a lot of all football over the years. Um, I've heard Miracle at South Bend brought up Georgia last year, but in terms of a comparison to what you saw yesterday, when you, when you take into account 11-year streak, who it's against, your most hated rival, what compares to that game? What's a good comparison? Is there one? I'm going off the rails right to start with, John. Forget the falls. This reminds me of the football game in the movie MASH. <laughs> <laughs> Before the game, Bush got them together and said, okay, we, they go place the bets. Okay, boys, we're going to drop a few balls in the first half. Yeah. We're going to give them a few bombs. Fine. Then at halftime, Dave Hart goes down to the Florida locker room, knocks on the door, goes in, says, boys, you want to double the bets? <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was all a, a ruse. They gave him the rope a dope. Guys, the miracle of South Bend? I got, it. I got one 1982. Tennessee beats Florida, or excuse me, beats Alabama, ends that streak. Now, you weren't an undefeated. It wasn't this crazy turnaround, but yeah. yeah. No, it wasn't a crazy turnaround, but I mean, it was a big streak against, at that time, your biggest mm -hmm. rival. And, World's Fair was in town, the house was packed. And so it reminds me of that, sans the getting down 21 to nothing and yeah. changing your bets at halftime. Right, I mean, that's just such a, you, you don't see games like that where and it, it wasn't really a turning point in the first half either. You could almost draw a line. I realize they hit the field goal at the end of the half, but for the most part, you could draw a line. That was literally two different games with, with four different teams over two halves of football. Uh, Will, You've played in a lot of games. Played in a lot of games, trying to think of which one I would describe it as of what games I played in. I mean, Arkansas in 1998, the fear of yeah. this hopelessness that you just got mm -hmm. beat, you lost everything you'd gone for, you had the big hype at that moment in time, and all of a sudden you're going out. You know, not as dramatic a switch from first half to second half of what happened, but, you know, overall just from that fan base of everybody just going, here we go again, we're walking out the door. So all of a sudden, you turn, you turn it on and you change the whole tone of that game very, very quickly. Jimmy, anything to compare it to? This reminded me more of the miracle at South Bend, but, but to me, this is even more impressive. And in fact, it's the best comeback I've seen at Tennessee because that Notre Dame game, it wasn't your rival like Florida is. Yeah. The other part is Tennessee was without three of its four best defensive players. I know Jalen Reeves maybe took a few token snaps, but he wasn't very effective. And you're not, a, you're not supposed to be equipped to rally from a deficit like that because this is not the greatest passing team in the world. But by golly, when they had to get it done in the second half, they did. And so to me, against those odds and against an 11-game streak and against a rival in the league, 
I thought it's the best comeback I've ever seen from Tennessee. One of the uh, things that was so, I think, odd about it, but also fun, was the fact that it was very much a reversal of so oh, many Tennessee yeah. Florida games. Yeah. <laughs> you know, right now those Florida fans are saying, why did our coaches come and take the foot off the gas in the second half? It, it gave Tennessee some life. They got confidence. I think it rattled Florida a little bit. You're looking at a guy like Callaway, their great receiver, Antonio Callaway, just brain freezes. He, he, he fields two fair catches inside his five-yard line, fumbles one of them. Uh, you, you, the only thing I can compare it to, and it's a reversal, the 1995 Tennessee-Florida game, mm -hmm. where the Vols were up 30-14 to 14 at the Swamp. It's looking good. Final score, 62-37 Florida. Mm -hmm. That I could compare it to, but this one was a little bit sweeter for Vol fans, I thought. Yeah, but mm -hmm. just a reversal of what you normally see in this rivalry. And talking to the Florida writers in the press box, that's the one they brought up, that 95 game, in reverse. Only to me, again, like everybody said, this is better because it ended the 11-game losing streak. Yeah. Uh, it, it matter of fact, we'll, we'll leaving the game actually followed behind two Florida fans there for a little while. And you just heard that exact thing. We took our foot off the gas. Why did our coaching staff do that? <laughs> Maybe we can still get back if they Tennessee loses to Georgia or somebody else and get to that. I mean, so it was like sitting there thinking about a lot of games we've come out against Florida, feeling that exact way and having those same conversations. They were having those then. So total reversal. How many of us talked last week about, boy, they, if, it's, if it's close late, I'm going to worry about it. Boy, if they have something, if the breaks go against them early, they're in real trouble. Shows what we know. This team, <laughs> and they have a knack for falling behind, but they seem to come back. You don't want to continue doing that. But, Bob, shocking that this team, the way it had looked, especially in the first half, but this team was able, as Jimmy said, to just turn all the bad stuff away and keep going forward. you got to give credit to the coaches. you, you got to give credit to the coaches, but you also got to look at Tennessee in the first half. If you don't drop five passes, if you make a catch here and there, if you make a play here and there, you had a couple of bad busts on defense. Tennessee was getting blown out, but they weren't getting blown out the way they have in the past by some teams where it's just like, okay, I didn't think they had a chance to come back in the second half, but it wasn't because Florida was just 12 play drives, we're not going to be able to stop them. There was a couple of things that if you tightened up, but I never thought they would tighten them up. Yeah. I mean, you dropped five passes in the first half, why are you probably going to drop five passes in the second half? Jimmy, you think people enjoyed Jalen Tabor getting that touchdown over his head? Tim no. Priest did. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Tim Priest, if you haven't heard of Tim was enjoying that. I'm not sure why. What was it? Get a little lat, that, uh, yeah. get some of that. Jalen Tabor was his call on that. <laughs> 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 Tim Priest. And Florida wore out. They absolutely yeah. wore out. Tennessee had them gassed at the end, and two Tennessee players talked about looking at the sideline, and they could tell by their body language that they were, they were done. We asked, uh, we asked, and some of the former players and the media here, we, we asked about the strength coach those first two games when they were getting pushed around by Appy State and Virginia Tech. Can't make any complaints about the conditioning. So kudos to that staff. They did a good job. Uh, did want to say this. My opinion, there's probably a better one somewhere, but I would have to think that is the best second half Tennessee has ever played in a football game. Duck pulls a truck in the second half. Total <laughs> yards, balls 334 to 102, and a lot of that for the Gators was in the fourth quarter. Uh, points 35 to 7. Vols rolled off 35 unanswered second half points. In a stretch of 14 minutes and two seconds, the score went from 21 3 Florida to 38 21 Tennessee. That's Incredible. the best 14 minutes and two seconds Tennessee's ever played. Uh, that's fair. I, I agree with it. I agree with it. I haven't seen all of the, I don't remember the 1938 team, but. <laughs> well, let me tell you. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. When we come back, we've got umpteen people on the show. We'll bring in four more next, including Sterling Hinton. You think he's in a good mood? Come on back on the Sports Horse.